welcome to the next lecture on electric power system here we are going to discuss the long transmission line so any transmission line whose length is more than 240 km is known as the long transmission line here the parameters are uniformly distributed along the whole length of the line so the parameters are basically the inductance capacitance resistance and the conductance so these are divided into various sections and each section is consisting of these parameters so in this figure we can see that it has been divided into various sections so if i consider this to be first section this is second section this is third section and so on and here we can see that each section is having a resistance a reactance a capacitance and a conductance so capacitance and conductance will form the admittance and resistance and reactance will form the impedance now in order to study the long transmission line problems we have to go for the rigorous solutions we have to go for the rigorous solutions here we take an elementary length of ds so ds is basically an elementary length which is at a distance of s from the receiving end so all over the calculations we are doing from the receiving end side so at the receiving end we are load is connected so at a particular length s your voltage is uh, v and when the elementary length ds the voltage is increased to v plus dv so as we go from the receiving end to the sending end our voltage is increasing because the sending end voltage will be more than the receiving end voltage due to the transmission losses now if we take all these elements to be of an elementary length to be an elementary length of ds and then try to solve the long line equations so let us consider that for a distance x from the transmission line or from the receiving end vr to a elementary length of dx the voltage is increased to v plus dv and here the voltage is v so the net impedance we take to be z into dx and the net admittance we are taking to be y into dx so the equation that will be formed due to this uh, assumption is dvx that is the elementary voltage is equal to ix into z dx so we can form an equation dvx by dx is equal to z into ix similarly the incremental current dix is equal to vx into y into dx so the second equation we can form dix by dx is equal to y into vx this formula comes from v is equal to i into z and current is equal to voltage into admittance so these are the basic formulas through which we have formed these equations so two equations are basically formed now if we double differentiate so if we take double differentiation of the equation of dvx so whatever the equation dvx we have if we differentiate it against the d by dx of d by dx so we are getting d2vx by dx square is equal to this equation dix by dx into z equal to this so this is the third equation the fourth equation or the voltage vx is the solution of this double differentiation equation so the solution of the double differential equation is having two constants c1 and c2 e to the power gamma x e to the power minus gamma x where gamma is basically a constant where gamma is basically a constant which is given by under root of the admittance into impedance okay so this is the general equation of the voltage vx at any length x so at any length x from the receiving and vr the general equation of the voltage is this so the dvx by dx whatever we have got in the previous equation there we can substitute and find out this as the equation 
C1 gamma e to the power gamma x minus C2 e gamma e to the power minus gamma x is equal to z into ix. So the value of the current ix we are able to get it from this equation. So here also two constants are there C1 and C2 but it is divided with zc into e to the power gamma x minus e to the power minus gamma x where zc is under root z by y. Basically this gamma is known as the propagation constant that we will discuss a little bit later. So this is known as propagation constant and this is known as characteristic characteristic equation or characteristic equation or the surge impedance of the line. Characteristic impedance or surge impedance. So it is impedance. Characteristic impedance or surge impedance. So here we can see that it is under root y into z. It is equal to under root z by y. So that is the difference. Now we have obtained the equation of voltage and current which are basically the general equation. So these are the general equation of the long transmission line which is defined as the function of x where x is basically the distance from the receiving end. x is basically the distance from the receiving end. Now we have to obtain the constant C1, C2. So this can be obtained only when you apply a boundary condition. So we can apply a boundary condition x equal to 0. So if we apply the boundary condition x equal to 0, the value of Vx will be equal to Vr and the value of Ix will be equal to the receiving end. So at x equal to 0, we are basically getting the receiving end. So here we are applying the conditions of x equal to 0, x equal to 0. So we are getting Vr and Ir in form of constants. So these constants are determined of C1 and C2. Now after determining these constants, we can put it in the equation. So this C1 and C2 equations, we can put it here to get the value of voltage Vx and Ix. So the final solution of Vx and Ix is in this format. So this is basically in the form of exponential. It is better to convert that into trigonometric form. So in order to convert the equation into trigonometric form, we have taken this part as common and this part as common. So here we are getting an equation in the form of hyperbolic function of the trigonometry. So Vx is equal to Vr cos Hx gamma x plus Ir Zc sin h gamma x and Ir cos h gamma x plus Vr i 1 by Zc sin h gamma x. So these are the basically the equations that we get the uh, general solutions of voltage and current at a distance of x for the parameter. But it is in the form of distance x whereas in transmission line we are generally more concentrate on the sending end or the receiving end quantity. So if we substitute the value of x to be L we are getting Vx to be equal to the sending end voltage and the current to be the sending end current. So we can get the relationship between the sending end voltage and sending end current with respect to the receiving end voltage with the help of receiving end current and this is known as the ABCD parameters. So here your A parameter is equal to basically cos H of gamma L and the B parameter is equal to Zc sin H of gamma L and parameter C is equal to 1 by Zc sin H of gamma L and the D parameter is basically cos H of gamma L. Now here we have got ABCD parameter of the long transmission line which relates the sending end quantities with the receiving end quantities but there is one main drawback or problem is that the gamma is basically a complex quantity gamma is basically a complex quantity. If gamma is a complex quantity, it will not be easy to find cos or sine hyperbolic of gamma into L because this gamma is hyperbolic function. So in order to evaluate this gamma which is basically a 
uh, complex quantity in the form of alpha plus j beta which is equal to under root y into z we will be using some methods to find the hyperbolic function so let us discuss the first method in the first method we will segregate the value of cos h and sin h and these we are putting at the gamma where gamma is basically alpha plus j beta which is multiplied with length of the transmission line l so alpha plus j beta now if we take the expansion of cos h and sin h a plus b then we are getting this so now it is free from the complex function and we can use the calculator or the standard tables to find out these values to find the total value of cos h and sin h so this is the method one method two is there where we can elaborate the cos h and sin h function in the form of binomial theorem so it is 1 plus gamma square l square by 2 factorial plus 1 plus gamma 4 which is equivalently equal to 1 plus yz by 2 and this is equivalently equal to under root yz 1 plus yz by 6 so if we know that then we can obtain the abcd parameter of a long transmission line with a series convergence can be conveniently this this is the approximate this is the approximate ABCD parameter of a long transmission line with this method taking into assumption. Method number three is that the cos h alpha l plus j beta can be written in this exponential form. Sin h can be written into this exponential form. So it is again independent of the complex notation. Now how do we interpret uh, the long line equations? So after we have obtained the ABCD parameters and we have related the sending and quantities, sending and quantities with the receiving and quantities. So how do we interpret the long line equations? So we have seen that gamma is equal to alpha plus j beta. Now here your alpha is basically the attenuation constant. The beta is basically the phase constant. So alpha is the real part and beta is the imaginary part. So the real part is known as the attenuation constant of the long line and beta is known as the phase constant of the long line. So the voltage Vs which we have obtained earlier can be written in this format where it, the value of gamma is substituted as alpha plus j beta. So here the equation of Vx can be uh, segregated in the form of two quantities Vx1 plus Vx2 where Vx1 and Vx2 are these two functions. So here we have seen that this is the general equation of the voltage. So the instantaneous voltage will be the sum of two quantities Vx1 plus Vx2 which we have obtained Vx1 plus Vx2 where here the phi1 and phi2 component are basically under root vr plus irzc and an other angle is vr minus irzc so basically vr plus minus ir into zc is your angle of phi okay so one is phi1 and other is phi2 so we can see that the vx function whatever we have it is the sum of two quantities and there we have seen that it is a function of two variables also one is variable is the time variable and other variable is the distance variable so the function vx of t is a function of two variable one is time and other is distance now these two represent two traveling waves one is known as the incident wave and other is known as the reflected wave so if we see that if this is the sending end and this is the receiving end where the load is connected so incident wave is going from the sending end to the receiving end whereas the reflected wave is coming from the receiving end to the sending end and the superposition of these two wave incident wave and the reflected wave will give you the standing wave in the long transmission line so here the equation can be written in this format. So this is the concept where the concept of standing wave is produced due to the superposition of the incident wave and the reflected wave. So long transmission line voltage and the current equation are function of 
both time as well as distance. So this completes the long transmission line. In the next lecture, we will discuss what is surge impedance and surge impedance loading. Thank you.